I'm bearded and bored. It's time to brew some more beer. I just said, yes, man. All right, so today on Bearded and Board, we're gonna make a cream ale using some of that malted corn that we made a few videos back. I'll put a link up here, maybe here, but somewhere up here or up here, I'll have a link to the uh, malting corn video just in case you haven't made your own malted corn. So let's get started. So today we're gonna do some flaked oats for uh, creaminess and mouthfeel. Three ounces of the uh, crystal malt. We've got two and three quarter pounds of the malted corn. Two pounds of Pilsner malt, fresh ground from my local homebrew shop. Check. Good, nabby. Four pounds of fresh ground six row barley that I also got from the homebrew shop. We're gonna do a little Irish moss at the end of the boil. And for the final ingredient, we're gonna use some uh, German Tetnang or Tetnanger hops. So normally to do something like this, we'd use a US05 yeast or maybe just an American ale yeast, lots of different ones. Um, but because of my setup here, I've actually gotta use a yeast with a higher heat tolerance because I'm fermenting in the garage. I'm actually gonna use a Saison yeast. I've never used this one, but uh, the interesting thing is, we're gonna get some fruity and clovey flavors, almost like a wheat beer. Uh, maybe even some banana esters in there. Airplane. And as always, make sure you've got your trusty thermometer. Digital is best. And a spoon. One component that's uh, just about equally as important when you're home brewing is a good timer. And I just use the one on my phone if you get a cell phone. If you don't have a cell phone, you probably live in a cave somewhere and you won't be watching this video. But uh, set a timer so you make sure you don't go over or under or miss your, uh, miss your hop additions, whatever. Oh, also we're gonna continue doing the no-chill method for this beer too, because um, it worked out really well last time. You'll see in the recipe down in the description that um, I've got the, uh, the time for the hop edition is really short compared to what I did last time. Last time was about 40 or 45 or 50 minutes, something like that into the boil, uh, or remaining in the boil. This one, 15 minutes. Um, this is a low hop beer style between eight and 20 IBU, so I'm hitting around 15. And I wanted to make sure that because we're doing a no chill, you're supposed to add about 20 minutes onto your hop additions. If you have a hop addition for a no-chill beer that says drop it in at 60 minutes remaining in the boil, you'd actually want to drop it in at 40 minutes because when you flame out and you leave it to sit, it's going to be getting pretty much full hop utilization for another 20 minutes as it cools down. So that's something to consider. So this one, the Tetnanger hops or Tetnang hops is only going to be in there about 15 minutes before we flame out. And we're also going to do that uh, Irish moss and see if we can get some uh, some of the proteins and sediments to drop out. The only problem I had with my Kentucky Common um, was that it was just cloudy as hell. And I, you know, I'm still kind of new to all grain brewing, so I want to do what I can to eliminate that. I know that, um, you know, lots of guys don't have problems with that, but I do, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and use some Irish moss. I have sweat all running into my eyeballs. Oh, it is hot as balls today. Devil's crutch, kind of hot. I got some swamp ass going on, some swass. Okay, so let's get our strike water heated up to 155, and uh, then we'll stir in all of our grains. Alright, we're at 
148.3, so I'm going to bump up the heat just a touch to get us to 150, so we have a little bit of time between now and cool down before I have to uh, light the fire again. All right, so the beer has been, uh, or the grain has been, whoop, there's my timer. That means it's been 75 minutes for our uh, mash. So now I'm going to take off my little improvised, uh, my little improvised thermal jacket and uh, bring the temp up to 168 to mash out. And uh, then we'll drain the grains. So this is what happens occasionally when you try to brew beer outside. A little bit of rain. I'll get to it in a minute. So one thing we got to do, we're going to take about four ounces of the wort, save that, let it cool, and add our Irish moss to it so that we can use that to help uh, drop the sediment out at the end of the boil. Beer. Gotta finish the beer. Okay, so we're gonna do the last couple of steps on the beer today. We're going to transfer it into the fermenter, make sure it's uh, well oxygenated, and then Pitch in our yeast and let it do its thing. That's it for the cream ale brew day, um, day and morning. I'll go ahead and post the uh, recipe down in the description. And uh, if you missed the uh, Kentucky Common that we also made with uh, the malted corn, go ahead and check out. I'll put a link up here or here. Either way, uh, I'll put a link up there for the um, Kentucky Common brew day. And then right now, I'll put a link up there for the Kentucky Common review is it up here or is it up here i never can remember if you enjoyed this video do me a favor and hit that like button and if you want to see more videos like this or other stuff by the way everybody who's already a subscriber thank you guys so much thanks for all of your comments i'm gonna have some more cooking videos definitely a review a tasting review video for this one I'm actually thinking about trying out some hobby blacksmithing and a couple of other projects, so stay tuned. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the little bell icon right next to it so that you can get notified whenever I post new content. 
And if you have any questions about this one, go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. I'll talk at you later.